Hi and welcome to another very exciting tutorial in this 24 days of Swift tutorials season. And today is day four and again we're going to deal with a 3D Earth model again but with AR kit and scene kit now. So we're dealing with augmented reality today and scene kit. And this is what we've created yesterday, a 3D model in scene kit, placing Earth into space. And today we're going to place our 3D model of Earth into our real environment using AR kit, augmented reality. And you can use this app to just place an Earth wherever you actually want and as many Earths as you actually want. So this is what we're going to create. And just a quick reminder, I've created this Slack workspace um, for this community so that uh, you can ask questions about Swift development, iOS development, and so on, and help each other out, or post ideas, or post if you have a new app that you'd like to beta test or whatever. This already works really great. And you will find the join link for this a Slack workspace that is absolutely free in the video description right below. And now let's get started with today's project. So to get started, let's open up Xcode and press Command Shift N to create a new project. And what we'd like to select today is an augmented reality app. Since we want to use a 3D object and not a 2D object, it is important that as the content technology, we're using SceneKit, which is Apple's 3D game engine that we have used yesterday to create our Earth model and to display it in its star field. And I'm going to call that ARKit Earth. And so let's hit next and create that project on our desktop. And the first steps that we should take is first of all, uh, add the textures for our earth. So it is actually the same thing as we did yesterday. So you can download these textures in the video description below. So I'm just dragging and dropping them to my assets folder. And what I'd also like to do is to import the Earth node that we have created in yesterday's tutorial. You will find a link to that tutorial also in the video description below. So I'm just going to drag and drop this Earth node here to my project. I make sure that copy items if needed is selected and also that I want to add this to our current target. And with that, we've added all the files that we actually need to our project. And let's just quickly have a look at the main storyboard in comparison to yesterday's storyboard where we had a, um, a scene kit view. We now have an augmented reality scene kit view that was automatically added by this template. And we also have a lot of template code here in our viewcontroller.swift file. And here we have to play around a little bit with what we have here. The first thing that we should do is removing the create a new scene in view to load code because we do not want to use the spaceship that is added also as a default object here when we use the augmented reality um, kit template. So we are not going to work with that. This is why we are deleting it. And um, except for that, we actually can keep everything that is here at the moment, but what we do not have yet is a scene object. So this is something that we should create right now. And we're simply creating an SCN scene by initializing one and adding that to our scene object here. And that's all there is to it. And as you can see here, we also have an outlet created for the scene view uh, that was automatically created by the Xcode template. And we're going to just keep everything of that in place. Let me just quickly go through this template a little bit so that you can see what we're dealing with. First of all, let's have a look at the import statement here. We're importing scene kit, which is kind of obvious, and also AR kit so that we can use all of the relevant classes here. Also, we're adopting the AR scene view delegate. So this is necessary for our for tomorrow's tutorial because this gives us a lot of delegate functions like renderer node for anchor, which we're going to talk about in tomorrow's tutorial, or something like session was interrupted and all these things that we have to deal with um, if, we, if we're going to use AR kit. And also we have some code here in view will disappear where we are pausing our scene view session. And the most important thing about AR kit is the configuration 
of our current session. So as you can see in view will appear, our template code already created a standard configuration with the AR world tracking configuration. If we have a look at that, then as you can see here, this is a configuration that uses the rear facing camera, tracks the device's orientation and position and detects real world flat surfaces. So this is the standard configuration that we're dealing with right now. And what we're doing with it is using the scene view, its session object, and then run our session with the configuration that we have defined before. And we're going to change this configuration tomorrow, but for now, let's keep it really simple. And as you can also see here in view will appear, the session is automatically started here with the run command as soon as the view appears on screen and is paused when the view will disappear. So this is a pretty short explanation of what we have here in this template. And what we want to achieve is that when we tap the screen, we actually would like to position our earth, our globe at the exact position where we are actually touching the screen. And therefore we're just going to override the touches began function of our view controller. So I'm adding that after you will disappear. I'm using touches began here. And to get the position of our touch, I'm creating a touch object and simply use the touches set that I have as a parameter right here and access the first object. What I'd now like to get is from this touch its location in our scene view. So let's use a new object here called location, use the touch, its location in our scene view. That is a global property here in our class. And now what we have to do to actually get 3D coordinates here is to perform a hit test. So if you can imagine that we're actually shooting a ray um, towards the real world here and we're intersecting real world objects as we do that. And this is what we're doing when we're uh, performing such a hit results test or a hit test that gives us hit results. And therefore, we're ca we can use the scene view and call the hit test function. And this searches for real world objects or augmented reality anchors in the capture camera image um, that are corresponding to a point in the scene kit view. And the point that we're using here is the location that we got from our touch. And for now, we're just going to use a feature point as the type for our hit test. And as you can see here, this is a point automatically identified by AR kit as part of a continuous surface, but without a corresponding anchor. And this is very simple to use that feature point now for our, uh, for our goal here. And let's just quickly unwrap this location here so that we can work with this hit test function. And now what we'd like to do is check if we indeed have a hit result. So I'm using the if let statement for that, checking if we have a hit test result by using the hit results and its first object. And as you can see here, this is uh, an array of AR hit test results. And we're simply using the first object here. And we now need the coordinates where we actually want to place our cube. And we need what we need for that is actually the transform of this um, hit test result. So let's define a transform object here, transform, use the hit test result and access the world transform, which gives us a four by four matrix that we can use to identify the exact coordinates. And now let's get the position from that position, which is a um, vector, a 3D vector, so an SCN vector three. And we initialize that with an X value, which is the transform, its fourth uh, column actually, so we access it with the index three, and there we'll find our coordinates that we need to use. So we're actually not accessing this like an array, but just with the third column here or the fourth column because we're starting indexing at zero. And here we can actually access the X coordinate. Let's do the same thing for Y. So transform columns three and Y. And for the Z coordinate, let's also use transform columns three Z. All right, so now we have the position. And now what we can do, since we have our earth node here that we have created yesterday, we can simply create such an earth node and place that at the position that we'd like. So let's create a new earth, 
just initializing that. And now let's take this new earth and set its position to the position we just defined. And now we can use our scene view, its scene, its root node, and simply add our new earth as a child node. And if you now run this in the simulator, you can go ahead and wander around a little and place as many Earths as you like in your home or somewhere outside. I hope you like this tutorial so far. Tomorrow we are going to deal with surfaces and place our Earth on planes. So we're also going to do plane detection. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to this channel if you do not want to miss anything, especially not the 24 days of iOS tutorials or Swift tutorials this Christmas season. So uh, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.